Hey guys, this is Lewis. Welcome back to Stone A Problems. Now I deeply apologize for, you know, I'm really trying to make this as often as I possibly can. <sighs> apologize, still working out the kinks. And so I wanted to go ahead and kind of give my thoughts on the recent, you know, not recent, but kind of recent, you know, the big poo blog going on around right now around right now which is the whole situation going on in ukraine and the unilateral abrasive uh, invasion of putin with the russian military upon the ukraine which is the breadbasket of that region um i know a lot of people talked about it and it's probably a subject that's been milked the fuck out but i do want to provide my input because there is a lot of historical context and and it's a can of worms, that relationship between those two nations or whatever the case may be. And I do love my history and I'm and, um, not proud of it, but I do know my fair share of Soviet history and Russian history in general. I do have a book called The Romanov, so I feel like, you know what, I'm kind of not qualified, but I still know enough to say something about it. So um, before we go ahead, please don't forget to like, subscribe and uh, comment. Um, if you have any rebuttals up or any other additional comments that you would like to state once you finish watching this video, please feel free to drop them down below and maybe we can get a conversation going. So, um, the first thing I want to go ahead and talk about is how ridiculous so many world leaders look to me, how much, how ridiculous, how hypocritical, uh, politics is. And how hypocritical world leaders are um, concerning this um, dilemma, the situation that, that that is just getting more and more crazy. And, and I'm going to preface my comments by stating, like, I'm obviously not condoning the actions. Not, like, I hope this goes without saying I'm not condoning the actions perpetrated by Vladimir Putin and the country of Russia towards Ukraine. But one of the most comical things i've ever seen in my recent in my whole life one of the, the, the it just shows you the stupidity and in, in, in the fakeness and and the lies that don't seem to have any end is in this world is really when we have our president uh i was about to say <laughs> vladimir uh joe biden hilariously call Putin a war criminal and you know pull out the morality card on him and and you know saying like what he's doing is you know he should be put out he's committing war crimes this is the sort of thing that can't happen in the world and we're we're better than that like, like I'm almost paraphrasing but it's just really comical because this is one of the dudes that voted for the Iraqi war you know three knowing damn well there was no nuclear weapons in Iraq. That was a lie that was fed to us, that was bullshit fed to us in order to get the public opinion behind them, in order to invade Iraq because Saddam Hussein, who the United States put in there, was like, you know what, this oil is now mine, not yours. And one thing you can't do is fuck with the United States money because the social, because the military industrial complex is a lucrative business very lucrative here in the United States. And Biden's one of those dickheads that voted for it. And you know why? And knowing damn well there was no nuclear weapons. Knowing damn well that the only reason the United States wanted to go over there was secure the oil and secure the precious minerals that are used to create these beautiful little iPhones and Androids and all this other gadgets that people love to use. Knowing damn well how the Chinese be pulling this shit off for such a low price. Knowing damn well that they're using forced labor, slave labor, basically, to create these phones. And, and you know, saying like, it, like, the United States basically went to Iraq for the same fucking reason that Putin is now in the Ukraine. Okay? So that's really comical. That, that to me, it... it I can't show respect to that. You know, it's really fucking ridiculous how there is no such thing as morality and people keep bringing it up, you know, because most people are too stupid to realize that it's a whole lot of bullshit. 
right? And now everyone knows what's going on with, with Hunter Biden's laptop. And a lot of people here in the government have a whole lot of money invested in Ukraine. Because there's a whole lot of money to be made in Ukraine. It's the breadbasket. It, it used to be called the breadbasket of Russia. Okay. When uh, the Soviet Union came around in the 20s and 30s, you know, first with Vladimir Putin's new economic policy, or was it new economic policy or plan? One of those two, it doesn't matter. And then you had the five, the notorious five-year plans of Stalin. They specifically went to Ukraine and made sure that they consolidated the Ukraine. And they did some really brutal shit. And I understand why Ukraine is like, fuck you, way back and down. There's a lot of animosity between these two. Um, for justified reasons towards the Ukrainians, of course, because um, Stalin uh, consciously, him and the rest of the, those crazy fuckers, purposefully caused a man-made famine in Ukraine in the, in the early 30s. You know, what is it, like three, two to three million people died in just a matter of a couple years in Ukraine? Because of the collectivization of farms and bringing all the resources, forcing people, you know, bringing all the resources to industrialize the city because, you know, Stalin was paranoid and, and well, for good reason that they, the Russia was just, a, just terribly behind the Western powers and he knew a war was going to come by, come by very soon and if they didn't industrialize, they'd be fucked. So that was the mindset and the Ukraine got really fucked. And so, it's just uh, like I, it's just hilarious to me that you know all this shit's going on with Biden. We'll get to the historic point in a minute. I digress because I really do love history. But another thing I wanted to point out about the hypocrisy of this nation and the hypocrisy of world leaders is look at what's going on in Israel. Israel are with the fuck what those fucking people are doing are almost as bad as the Nazis. Okay, they're putting these Palestinians in ghettos. They're creating an apartheid government. Okay, what the, what's going on over there is some serious shit. No one talks about that here. There are no sanctions towards uh, to, towards Israel. There's no war crimes. Or not, there's nobody pulling out a fucking judge like some Nuremberg trial shit. Asking for, uh, you know, uh, 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 trying to get these motherfuckers for war crimes. Trying to get these fuckers for... Uh, 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 crimes against humanity and things of that nature. No one is talking about that. Because when it's not in your interest, no one cares. Like I mean, when it's in your interest, you turn a blind eye. Like what's going on in Israel. Like what's going on in China. Okay, because China owns the United States. You can make a solid argument that US, the U.S. really is no longer a sovereign nation. And it is being more and more apparent that 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 idea is becoming more and more apparent, and is transitioning more and more into actual factual reality. So this whole situation is really starting to highlight the fucking disgusting nature that is politics, and politics is no more. It's a business. It's money, and in. And as time goes on, the comparisons of the United States towards the late Roman Republic are becoming, are making more and more sense. People are not coming into politics anymore to actually do something in government to enact some sort of policy changes or some shit like that. No, they're not doing that. People are entering politics to advance their own careers and to advance and secure money for their families and secure more money for themselves. So it's an avenue to acquire more wealth and more power. There's no politics, in my opinion. And politics is just some superficial word that just keeps getting thrown out there because people are, are there's just enough people that are dumb enough or ignorant enough to not realize that the, this development. You know, American politics is a joke. And so these two nations that I've just previously highlighted, you know, uh, no one talks about China. No one talks about, no one's trying to fucking make an, uh, 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 no, I don't see anybody clamoring out in the streets or in, on YouTube or in the fucking news saying that we should make sanctions on the U.S. Uh, I mean, on China. Uh, who? Who? It's like those same fucking people who were marching out in the Cuba thing. I live in Miami. I saw it. 
it's it was fucking comical to me. It was fucking comical that people like I'm I, like like I'm not saying what's going on in Cuba. It's comical, obviously. But what's going what's comical to me is that first of all, it took y'all seventy years to do something. Everyone and their mama knows what's going on in Cuba. Everyone. And for you, it, it, like I said, it just shows you that what is in your immediate interest is when you suddenly give a fuck. But when it's not, you don't, you, you, you pretend like it never doesn't matter, it doesn't happen. So you see people walking out on these protests, you see people walking out and it's voicing with poses and, and, and banners and all oh, these anti-human, anti-human, um, these humanitarian violations, and blah, 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 blah. But guess what? These jackasses have the new iPhones. These jackasses have the new Samsung, Google phones and shit. You know what I'm saying? And everyone knows where these devices are made, how they are made. No one wants to fucking talk about that. No one wants to acknowledge that China is literally sending fucking Muslims into concentration camps and fucking sterilizing them and shaving their goddamn hair and being forced to make these fucking phones, these gadgets that we love so much that we spend thousands of dollars every single fucking year to get the newest one. So this, they, this whole situation is really highlighting how perversive and how self-interested people really are. Right, and how people are so willing and so stupidly fucking quick to hop on the fucking bad wagon because everyone else is. When it's in your interest, you don't you care. When it's in your interest, you are sudden a champion of humanity. That's how it is now. So now we're gonna go ahead into the the meat and potatoes, the nitty gritty about the Ukraine and and and, and, and Russia. It's a very very messy situation and there's always going to be animosity there's a whole lot of resources in the ukraine like i said when the soviet union came around the first thing they wanted to do was uh, uh is to make goddamn sure that the ukraine was part of the soviet union remember a lot of these countries after the russian revolution tried to break off and create their own countries there was no way in hell that the soviet union was going to let that happen with the ukraine that's the breadbasket a whole lot of wheat for the world is made there. A whole lot of oil. Okay. And we're going to go to something dark. But honestly, one of the stupidest decisions that the Nazis ever did when they marched in there in 1941 in Operation Barbarossa was make partisans of the Ukrainians and their fucking stupid racist ideology. Because when they started marching east, there's a whole lot of countries there. And a whole lot of ethnic, ethnic groups they really did not like the Soviet Union. They did not like them. Because the collectivization farms and the five-year plans and all that sort of shit really displaced a lot of their economy. Really killed a lot of people. That shit was not good. That was nasty as fuck. Brutal. And people want to bring communism to the, to the modern era. It perplexes me. But whatever. Um, they really fucked up. Because Ukraine welcomed them. Welcomed them with open arms. They're like, oh shit. They're liberating us. We're here. Uh, we'll be down to fight y'all. We'll be down to fight with y'all to kill these stupid motherfuckers. They were down. They welcomed the Nazis warmly. With open arms. Until the Einstein got involved. Until they came around. And they started killing a whole lot of people real quick. So, you know, throwing them in unmarked graves and shooting them and raping them and burning villages and stuff like that. And they made partisans out of, out of potential allies. It, it, it's just very complicated. And this is always going to be a, a center of conflict. Now, the one thing that I do have to you have to also take it into consideration is that what you like wars of conquest are no longer viable they're no not, not not no longer viable is that you have to be really intelligent about it because public opinion really does matter and in a world where we're so integrated through social media you can't get away with these sort of things anymore we're progressive we can't let that sort of shit happen anymore you know every single country in the world was made violently but it doesn't fly that way anymore. 
you can't just use right of might anymore. It doesn't work that way. You are going to be villainized like you are right now. I mean, I mean, I mean I'm obviously speaking about Putin and Russia. But that's how it is. Public opinion really does matter. And that's something that you really have to take into consideration, even though, you know, people are dumb as fuck. But you have to take that into consideration. And you can't do this anymore. So he really fucked his shit to bed with this one. Like I know there's a lot of money and I know there's a lot of resources, but you can't do that. But to me, what's even more stupid is the sanctions against Russia. That is stupid as fuck. Really dumb. Oh, we're gonna impose sanctions. Oh, really? Where's the food? We in the United States are about to face a major food so shortage. And gasoline, the way it is right now, it's only going to skyrocket. Because why are these stupid sanctions? Because we have a fucking ass nine senile president that enacts these stupid things and has no backup plan. No resolution. No sort of way to mitigate the possible ramifications for imposing such stupid fucking actions. Like, I get it. You have to be moral. Let me get morality, morality. What happened to fucking pragmatism, morons? Like, yes, it's the moral thing to do. But morality is going to kill people. Morality is going to really make our lives a living hell. And it's just only just begun. It's only just begun. Look what's going to happen in Europe. They made sanctions against Russia. A lot of these European countries are going to face some serious economic turmoil because Russia is not some backwater country. It's not some fucking random country that you can't even name in Africa or some shit or in the Middle East that you can't even pronounce. It's Russia. A lot of resources come from Russia. Steel and ores and, and like a whole bunch of crazy shit. A whole bunch of shit. It's a big ass fucking country. Big ass country. And a lot of these fucking European nations require the imports from Russia. So they're fucked. Because they have to be moral. And they have to be on the moral high ground. Even though they're not moral at all. Ah, oh, man. Um, I really do hope this turns out for the best, obviously. I hope Ukraine wins. We stand with you. But, uh, you know, it, like I said, you can't really go about this in this uh, openly aggressive fashion anymore. But this whole situation is just really highlighting the world we live in now. It's the world of bandwagon, stupid fucks, don't even really know what's going on. But since they see the favorite celebrities talk about it, they hop on it. And they have no idea what the fuck is going on. It's like Black Lives Matter. It's like identity politics. It's like the 1619 Project and all these stupid things that are going on nowadays. Uh, we're really digressing, people, and that's why I really tell people, read a book or watch a lecture or watch something so you can notice these things. Because it's very easy to just go with the flow or go with the with the tide, where the tide is going. And you might be like those, what, the, what are those stupid animals that notoriously jump off cliffs because they don't see it coming? Whatever, I don't know the name of those animals. So I don't know if my analogy is no longer valid, but you know what I mean. Um, wake up, people. And like I said, I hope this develops in a positive fashion and you know, we'll see what happens. But people are imposing sanctions and committing these sort of actions that are going to have very negative consequences to the opposite people. You know, there's going to be a whole lot of collateral damage going on. We're going to pay for something that we have nothing to do with. Basically, so. Uh, food for thought. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, until next time, peace.